everybody and welcome to a brand new video on the channel my name is elite and today we've got a new episode of trading to glory i know i've been absent for the past over a week now and there is good reason for it it started off with at training i got a grade two ankle sprain so i was pretty miserable for a day or two that was a lot of pain and then after that, still really hurting, I had to be in the hospital for a couple days for my girlfriend's aunt who was getting brain surgery. So that kind of took up some time. And then a couple days later, I had the regional tournament for my team and I'm still trying to recover with my ankle. So I'm staying off it as much as possible. Uh, at that point, I was kind of skipping classes, icing it so much just so I could play in the weekend. And then we went to regionals. Uh, that was a few days and now I'm finally back and I just recorded this video once and uh, my mic wasn't on so I'm straight up not having a good week right now but nonetheless let's hop in to this trading to glory guys if you've been enjoying the series drop a like on it it would really mean a lot and uh, what I did cover the first time I recorded this was all of the Bundesliga SBCs that are actually worth doing so I'm gonna go through that but unfortunately won't have the packs to open anymore. I'll show you what I got. You didn't miss much. But straight up, guys, you're going to want to do Eintracht Frankfurt. That's the first one. Rare Mixed Players Pack. That is a four gold, four silver, four bronze pack. All of them being rare, obviously. So if you can get that for like 13k or less, I'd say is probably the benchmark for that kind of pack. You're getting a good deal. And right now, if you do get some players in return from like Fortuna Dusseldorf, from Paderborn, from Union Berlin, you're going to make some coins back that way. I did pack a, uh, I believe it was Fortuna, no, it was a Paderborn player, and Paderborn's a super expensive SBC. Those things can sell for up to 10,000 coins on certain uh, silver cards. So Frankfurt's a good one to do because it doesn't have any of those expensive players and gives a pretty good pack in return. Next one I do is Hertha Berlin, Hertha BSC. Gives you a Prime Electrum Players Pack and this one's only going to cost you about 11,000 coins and a Prime Electrum Players Pack is going to be a 6 gold, 6 silver and then out of the 12 cards, there's six rare. So on average, you're gonna get three rare gold cards. So similar to like a 25K pack in terms of rare gold cards, but you could also get something decent in those silvers as well. Next up, we've got FC Cologne. This one's very cheap, only costing like 9,000 coins and you get a 25K pack in return. Pretty standard right there. And I'd say that's a pretty decent deal most people it's worth taking the risk although you're not guaranteed to get 9k back i feel like if you open all these packs which are slightly risk you might pack something decent in return and, and make it all back in one pack next up we've got borussia mönchengladbach which is another 25k pack this one is 12 gold players three of them being rare and uh this one's pretty cheap as well you do gotta spend a little bit more on one center back but what i'd suggest guys is once you do this sbc don't go with somer and then only go with one center back and then that way you guys can throw like a left mid and goalkeeper and a cd on that center back and that's the cheapest way to go about it next up is rb leipzig this one a little more expensive than the other ones i'd say least worth it out of the eight i'm showing you but you do get a rare electron players pack in return which is six rare golds six rare silvers and you're going to be spending about 15 or 16 thousand coins on the pack so 30k pack you're getting it for about 15 16k it's somewhere around there is probably worth it but you are taking a little risk if you have a terrible pack in return you're only gonna be making like 8 or 9k back which means that you're taking about a 5 or 6k loss on the pack which it could be a little bit more risky than the other ones FC Schalke on the other hand 25k pack you only get three rare golds but guys it's only gonna cost you about six or 7,000 coins. I mean, super cheap SBC there. And then Hoffenheim is very worth it as well, a rare mixed players pack. Gonna cost you about 10,000 coins. You get four rare gold, four rare silver, four rare bronze. I'd say that's definitely worth it as well. Werder Bremen to finish it off, another rare mixed players pack and another very cheap SBC, costing about 10K, very similar to the Hoffenheim. Those are the SBCs that I'd say are worth doing out of Bundesliga currently. I'm not saying that they that might change because it probably will, especially as we see more supply onto the market. 
uh, especially come like one month from now when we see Black Friday. And I'll talk about a little bit more of Black Friday during this episode. But, you know, you'll see Borussia Dortmund, which right now is like 23K to complete. And when you're spending 23K on a rare Electrum Players pack, I mean, it's really not making much of a deal on that pack. So I didn't finish Borussia Dortmund. I actually sold the cards that I bought for it. And then the other SBCs just don't seem worth it. I mean, it's a 25K pack for Bayer Leverkusen, and it's 17K to complete. Paderborn, you're getting a small Prime Electrum Players pack. Yeah, it's 55K to complete. So you definitely don't want to do Paderborn right now. You're going to wait till there's more supply on silver cards to pick up some Paderborn players if you really, really want to complete that SBC. But I suggest don't complete the entirety of the Bundesliga SBC. It's just not worth it for the untradeable cards. Straight up not worth it. But talking about the ultimate scream cards, starting off with Bernard. This card right now going for about 191,000 coins. It's lower than what he was going for yesterday. Why is that? First reason is because, uh, this speculation, and I'd say the biggest reason is because of the speculation behind these cards, week one ultimate scream going back into packs on Halloween, which is very possible because if you think about it, the ultimate scream promo has been pretty meh so far. Now, granted, I was away for a week, so I didn't see how hype it was, but based on your guys' reactions on Twitter, it didn't seem like you guys uh, were getting too happy about the SBCs and stuff dropped throughout the week, and uh, I don't think I missed much. Nonetheless, guys, this could really leave EA with an opportunity to end with a bang. Whether that means they drop week one and week two Ultimate Screams impacts at the same time on Halloween, maybe they do it for the entire weekend, or they do something like a guaranteed Ultimate Scream uh, SBC, similar to like the guaranteed OTW SBCs or guaranteed TOTS SBCs that we've seen in previous years. They could do a guaranteed Scream SBC where you can get a Scream card from week one or week two. Maybe it's like an 85 or 86 rated team with two informs. I don't know. But if they do something like that, then those cards will absolutely drop in price a ton. Even if they're not in packs from the store, if they're in packs from SBCs, that could be even worse. So what I am saying, guys, the biggest tip I can give you right now, don't hold any Scream cards past 6 p.m. UK. If you buy it right now, which I actually just bought a Bernard. I just bought a Bernard because I saw it at 182. You know, you saw it's going from 191 right now. I could probably get 199K overnight. So I make a nice, you know, almost 9, 10K profit overnight. I'll take that. But I'm selling it overnight tonight. And if it doesn't sell... I'm taking my coins. I'm not holding it past 6 p.m. UK. It's just not worth taking those risks throughout the next couple of days. No matter what you're holding, anything could really drop significantly on any point. Now, firstly, when you're holding onto a card like a Rangis and you got them for 900 coins, yeah, that's not too much of a risk. It's an 83 rated card, and if they did drop a guaranteed uh, Scream SBC, you could probably see 83s, 84s, 85s, 86s go up in price. So those cards, not so much of a risk. The cards that are a risk are cards like Bernard, cards like Anaki Williams even. Like, you might not even have that on your radar at all. But it's an 82 rated card. It's not used in any SBCs. And although it's a good card, that's the only demand. And since it's so low rated, the more supply that builds, the lower that card's gonna go. It's only 4,000 coins right now for Anaki Williams. And I'll show you the card right now. But just SBCs like the Cauldron that dropped today is gonna have an effect on cards like Anaki Williams. It's going to cause this card to go down in price. Simple fact is, the demand, although it's not as high as it was at the beginning of the year, as people are upgrading their teams and maybe going from Anaki Williams to, you know, maybe getting Benzema or, or maybe even, even better, maybe getting Suarez for their La Liga teams, Anaki Williams is still in demand. But as supply builds, the demand is not going to be able to hold that up. The demand is staying the same, if not dropping, and the supply continues to build throughout the year, as this card hasn't been out of packs once. So he's 4,000 coins now, he was like 19k a few weeks ago, and once Black Friday comes in one month, this card will legitimately be 800-900 coins discard price, you won't even bother listing them on the market anymore. So those kind of cards are something you gotta keep in mind. If you have them in your club, I'd sell them. If you have 
any value for low rated cards like that and you don't think that they have any sort of potential for being in an SBC in the future um, and going up in price and I'm telling you right now that Anaki Williams cards it's not going to go up a ton from a La Liga SBC. It's not really going to have too much of an effect on a Naki Williams card. I hate to break it to you. So you got to keep that in mind. I know it's kind of far-fetched, but it's something that is going to have an effect on your total coin total, and I wanted to throw that out there. So these kind of cards, Arangis and, and, you know, a Serebi and Pablo Serebia, maybe not as risky, but Bernard, I'd sell that every single time you have it. If you pack it, I'd sell it before 6 p.m. UK. And then, when do I make my investments? When am I picking up my cards long term? I'm waiting till at least, at least Thursday night. At least Thursday night. And you might be like, well, didn't you tell us at the beginning of the year? At the beginning of this series, you were like, Thursday is sell day. Yeah, it might have been sell day a month ago. But it's not sell day anymore. Because we're staying one step ahead of everybody in this series. All right? We don't wait till the masses catch up to us. We don't wait for people to catch on that Thursday is sell day. Because what happens when people catch on that Thursday is sell day, it just doesn't become sell day anymore. If everybody's selling on Thursday, the supply rises so dang much and everything drops. It doesn't even rise on Thursday. Even though there's weekend league demand, everything drops. And then on Friday, you kind of see the rise in price. Saturday, you see a little bit of a rise in price and then it drops again on Sunday because of the end of weekend league, people selling off their teams. And then during the week, you see random SBCs dropping that add supply to the market. You see marquee matchups every Thursday, marquee moments seem to drop almost every Thursday, which is even more supply hitting the market on Thursdays, which makes Thursday maybe not the greatest day to sell. Maybe you want to sell on Wednesdays to stay one step ahead. Maybe you want to wait later into the weekend to sell. For me, I just go ahead and buy, and whenever I see profit, I'm going to go ahead and sell. Or I'm going to buy on Thursdays when, when they drop because of all the supply that hits from investing and from marquee matchups and from marquee moments and from whatever they drop on Halloween this Thursday because they're going to drop something on Halloween. Whether it's not huge like it could be, it might not be a guaranteed Scream SBC. It might not be putting every single Scream back in packs. It might not be something huge, but they might just drop another the Cauldron SBC or the Dragon SBC or something like that. You know, they might drop another All Hallows Eve SBC or Graveyard SBC. And that adds more supply to the market. And that means it's a good time to buy something and you know you're getting a deal. So that's why I think I'm waiting till Thursday. Now, there are still some things that I think you could probably buy on Wednesday or buy right now um early early on, on wednesday morning or wednesday night and then sell on thursday morning i'm not saying hold past 6 p.m uk but i'm saying thursday morning that could really really go up in price i mean last week what we saw was Langlet was one of the cards that really really rose it's some of these cards that aren't too low rated but are still heavily in demand and are definitely what people are starting to reach for their teams so Langlet who I can't remember what his price is right now, but he's going for about 80,000 coins. And that's pretty much what he was last week. He was going for about 80K, 90K. And he reached up to about 115,000 coins after rewards. He really skyrocketed in price. So you kind of got to think, what are people starting to get into their teams? What are people starting to achieve? Is it is it players like Lang, Lang Let? Maybe the step above this week, is it Varane? Are people getting rid of Nico Scholes? Maybe he's done for, all right? He's only uh, a couple thousand coins now as he was, you know, maybe 20K a few weeks ago. It's not a Naki Williams anymore. We talked about him. So what's the next step? What are people being able to afford now? Pogba, maybe Conte, maybe stuff like that, where they're high enough rated to where they don't get packed a lot during rewards, but they go up in price a lot during rewards because people get coins on their team. Uh, or get coins added to their account from Div Rivals, people start generating coins from selling players from their packs from Div Rivals, and then they're able to afford these cards now, and they want to build their weekend league teams on Thursday, so players like Conte and Pogba may go up in price a lot. Maybe Griezmann is the guy. Uh, maybe Ben Yedder's too low rated and he starts dropping. So it's kind of something you got to even out. Rating and demand, I think the range that you're looking at are something between Veron and Griezmann is stuff, you know, in that range, 
is probably what's going to be the best thing to buy and sell for Thursday flips. I'm probably not going to participate in Thursday flips. I, I just don't see um, enough demand hitting, especially during this screen promotion. It's too risky. But if you're going to do it, if you are going to do it, make sure you sell before 6 p.m. UK. And I think that's the biggest message that I'm trying to implant in your brains for the next couple of days. I'm not saying this is going to be our ideology for the next month, uh, although I'll probably bring it up at different times. This is our ideology for the next couple of days, just so we're safe with our coins going into what could be another drop in prices on Thursday night. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys appreciate me recording this video twice for you, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'll see you tomorrow with another upload and with consistent uploads, hopefully for the rest of the month. I mean, until early December, we should have consistent uploads. Early December, I do have finals week, so I might be a little inconsistent for like a week there, but overall, uh, you know, season's over, so I've got more time for FIFA and I got more time for you guys. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.